Well, good evening, everyone. Everyone, thanks for uh, coming. We'll start with the open forum. Is there anyone that would like to address the board at this time? And we, uh, we uh, just, uh, I think we, we have no cameras tonight, is that correct? Yeah. But we have audio. Correct. Okay. All, right. All right. I'm Janice Jeffrey. I'm speaking on behalf of the Albert Lee Education Association Executive Council. The ALEA appreciates your January 18th email asking for input from the teaching staff as the Albert Lee School Board defines their goals for the next year. With such short notice, it is difficult for us to facilitate conversations among our members that could yield meaningful feedback based on our knowledge and expertise. One thing the ALEA would like to see in your goal setting is collaboration between teachers, administration, and the school board. We are not asking to usurp the district's managerial rights. We recognize that we are not the decision makers of school board policy or educational initiatives for the district. However, our education and experiences qualifies us to be effective collaborators, sharing ideas, experiences, and knowledge. Many school boards around the state have not only student representatives, but also parent and teacher representatives on the school board. Our district supports the DeFore model of professional learning communities. The driving component of the DeFore model is collaboration. Teacher collaboration has resulted in meaningful reflection and educational progress around our district. We want to see that collaboration become the model of decision making at the district level. Encouraging a collaborative process that gives teachers input into the policies, directives, and goals of the district will let teachers know you value their education, knowledge, and dedication, and will help ensure that viable decisions are made reflecting the diverse needs of our district's educational population. According to Learning by Doing by DeFour, interdependence is what organizations are all about. Productivity, performance, and innovation result from joint action, not just individual efforts and behavior. The degree to which people are working together in a coordinated, focused effort is a major determinant of the effectiveness of any organization. Thank you. Any comments or questions for Janice? Um, that was my email that was referenced, and I would just like to say that I have mentioned the goal setting session over the last five board meetings. And I would expect that people would look at the minutes, maybe view the meetings. So the email yesterday shouldn't have been a surprise. And I take some exception that it was characterized as that. I do expect that the teachers and the staff know what the board's doing by attending the meetings, reviewing the minutes, or we put ourselves on the TV for that purpose as well. And there is a difference between goals and policies. The purpose of tonight's meeting was for goal setting and not policy setting. And we're not going to decide any goals tonight. We're just starting the process. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for anyone else to be involved. We were aware of the board's um, initiative to start goal setting. We did hear it in the school board minutes. Um, the direct email asking for our direct input came yesterday. And we are giving you our input upon that email that you sent that we would like to see collaboration. You have also suspended any meetings between the administration and the ALEA where we could talk and solicit these ideas as part of your negotiation process. So I, I take some, some affront at this as well when you tell us you don't want to meet with the administration anymore until the negotiations are complete and then you come and you drop this on the school board. Um, as part of the negotiations process that you're referencing, we've been told that the school board doesn't want communication with us. And I'm, I'm just gonna interrupt. I, I wanna negotiate in a negotiating room and I wanna teach in a classroom and I do not want this session that we have planned tonight to deteriorate into any kind of argument. We are gonna work on our goal setting tonight. As I've stated many times, I value input from everyone. 
and especially the teachers. So I apologize if there was a short notice. I don't believe in my heart that there was, but this is the beginning of that process. These other negotiating topics are not for this board meeting. They're for the negotiating sessions. So I appreciate that you came tonight. I would like to say I did not intend to bring negotiations into the process, just stating our, that we wanted to make collaboration part of your goal setting. Okay, thank you for coming. Any other questions for Janice? Anybody else that would like to address the board? Anybody else that would like to address the board at this time? Hearing none, we'll move on to celebrating our successes, the Children's Dental Health Clinic. Katie and Amy. Hi, I'm Amy Browers. I'm a social worker at Halverson Elementary. This is Kim Anderson. She's the social worker at Sibley. And we have Katie Nielsen, who's a social worker at Hawthorne. And we are here because we think that the Children's Dental Health Services has been a big success in the Albert Lee Schools. Um, Children's Dental Health Services is a nonprofit organization that is based out of Rochester. And their mission is to provide preventative dental care services for underserved children. They do this um, in a 100% portable model. So they bring the services to the kids and um, having that access to dental care really removes a lot of barriers that often prevent kids from getting dental care or, um, or consistent dental care. Um, they actually came to Freeborn County in 2013 and were working with like WIC and Public Health and they serviced 348 kids then, and then they realized there was a big gap and they needed to reach out to more kids. So that's when they decided to contact us and start working in the school district. And that happened in the fall of 2014. So um, Everly was, they gave permission to Children's Dental Health Services to pilot two programs in the schools. One was at Halverson and one was at Hawthorne. And throughout the 2014-2015 school year, um, just about 70 kids were provided with services. Their services are um, provided very ethically, professionally, flexibly. I mean, it's just been a really fantastic opportunity for children. Um, the other thing that we've seen is that um, the success has been there, and so they've expanded the programs to um, all the elementary, so Sibley and Lakeview and also to Southwest Middle School. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the reasons they decided to do this is because kids miss so much school because of dental issues um, and the lack of services. And so, um, like when they started in 2013, um, only 46 kids were referred to extra places. There's a place in Fairboat that just takes MA because they only work with kids that have um, medical assistance. That's who actually they're serving. After they were here in 2014, 95 kids actually ended up going for extra services and extra care. Um, the, if you can see, the um, Children's Dental Health Services are uh, working with five counties, actually. And in every one of those counties, I think a key player is actually the public school systems there. Um, so you can see that it's... In total, in 2015, they provided care for 3,715 children in that five-county area. So it's really awesome, very impressive. So when the services started at Halverson, um, initially it was a representative that came to the school during conferences, and they provided information um, and kind of outreach to our families. As the services have progressed, um, I am the person who usually provides that information. I make sure the information is available. Um, sending information home to families, working with the success coaches to do some outreach for families who don't speak English. Um, and it, it has just, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, I, the clinic, they come to the school and it's like you don't even know they're there. They need access to garbage cans, water, 
and a space that they can set up about three workstations. Um, they get a map of the school, they get the numbers for the classrooms. I work with Rachel Billman, who is the contact person for Ch Children's Dental Health Services, and we put together a list of the students who, whose families have filled out the consent form. Um, I fill in the grade and the teacher, and they take it from there. They call the classrooms, they get the kids to and from, and it's really just been a fantastic opportunity for the kids. By the time we end this year, right now we have over 70 kids that will be provided services um, in the spring. We started out at 44 in the fall of 2014, so we're seeing really nice growth. And that's the same in Hawthorne. We've seen, we started off with like 36 kids and now by the end of this year we'll be probably over 70. We did 64 different kids this fall, but they're gonna come back um, in April and we'll probably see, I don't know how many more kids added to that 64 because they'll get to see, they'll see the same kids because it's every six months plus we'll add on more. Um, and then I also threw, or I'm um, passing around, when the kids have their services after they're done, they get a little education from the hygienist and then they get a packet to take home. Um, so it's kind of a neat little care package for the kids. They are so excited when they have their little package and they're all done. So it's kind of a, a really, they actually make it a fun experience for the kids. Um, and how we've done it at Hawthorne is we started out in our media center. The first year we did it in the media center. Um, and this past fall, we actually, um, at Hawthorne, there's a, um, a divider. We closed a divider, and it, we had such a nice fall that we could have gym classes outside. Um, so half of the gym was dental services for two days. And they just set up little dividers, as you can see in the pictures. And kids came and went and were called from classrooms, and we had no issues. No one, um, we had, well, I should take the back. We had one little girl that... Um, Got a stomach ache from the sealants, but I think it was just nerves and stuff. But otherwise, everything went went very smoothly. They came in and came out with with anybody relieving knowing. So, mm -hmm. and um, rolling it out in the schools and um, Albert Lay has been, I think, done very wisely. Starting out with a pilot in your two schools mm -hmm. and adding on Lakeview and Sibley this year. Um, because it was new and on Lakeview and Sibley, I was able to consult with these ladies and find out, you know, learn from them what worked, what didn't work. So I really appreciated the fact that we could offer it to the Sibley kids. Very well received in our school this year. Um, um, did an awesome job of reaching out to the families. I had some families um, that didn't find out about it express interest for the spring clinic when they do come back at that six month point. So. I'm hoping to add quite a few more students to our, our service as well. And so Lakeview and Sibley have been, they've started out at about the same number. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Mackenzie wasn't able to be here tonight, but she did say that things went very smoothly at Lakeview as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, moving on to the Southwest, um, the social workers were not involved at Southwest this year. Linda Anderson is a contact person. Um, the social workers did express that they would like to be more involved with it next year. They, um, they had like 60 kids signed up and then there were some absences and other things so they ended up serving 50 kids. Um, they did say that at Southwest because you've got the, the red and the blue and then schedules and all sorts of things that it was a little trickier to get kids to and from the clinic but all things that can be worked out. So in summary, um, and you gals chime in too, um, I just think it's a really wonderful, successful um, opportunity for our families and for the community and removing those barriers. Um, you know, you look at that total of that uh, five county area, 3,715 kids getting that preventative health care um, that's going to benefit them for the rest of their lives. It's super great, awesome opportunity for us to be collaborating with. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, too, that um, I did uh, put in some links to the website. One of them is to the form that the parents have to fill out. And it's such a one-page consent form. Um, it's in Spanish and English. And then a link also to just some of the education that they work with families on and the kids on, so that it's not just they come to the clinic and that's it. Six months later, they come back and that's it. But they're hopefully working on kind of that dental hygiene um, nutrition and kind of those lifestyle habits that also impact dental health. I had a little 
guy stopped me in the hall just the other day, and it's been a couple of months since they were there, and he, he stopped me, and he says, guess what? I'm like, what? I brush every day, <laughs> twice a day. <laughs> I'm like, yay. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions for us, or? What is, are, the, are, the are the dentists involved? Are they local, like dentists that do pro bono work, or it's the same? They're it's hygienists. Yep. Hygienists? Yep. And they, they do yeah. work closely with a um, dental clinic in Faribault, yeah. and partly because accepting MA, yeah. and then just getting people in quickly. Um, that's been another barrier is, you know, if you call it a scheduled dental appointment, it can be months out. Um, yeah. So transportation to the clinic, but working with MA um, to provide some assistance with um, transportation costs and those things yeah. um, is a benefit too. Yeah, MA will pay for transportation when it comes to mental, um, uh, dental and medical appointments. So we can help coordinate all that service mm -hmm. as well. Good. Well, I know we certainly all appreciate what what you're doing because I think a lot of us take dental health for granted, and mm -hmm. it's not. So yeah, very, very good. Uh, and other questions or comments? Last year I had a third grader that told me, well, I just don't have time to brush my teeth. I said, oh, I think we've got to find time. So mind, Minecraft was too, yeah. too busy. Yeah. It's too important. I think Ju Julie has a question. I just had one question. Maybe you said it at the beginning, and if you did, I apologize. Is this service open to all kids at the elementary, and or are certain kids targeted and given the information? It's, it's in the child find process. Um, I, I, I think we want to brainstorm a little bit on that. Um, there are set criteria they need to part be participating in a Minnesota health care program of some okay. kind. Okay. Um, they haven't really worked with, correct me if I'm wrong, like private mm -hmm. dental insurance mm -hmm. at this point okay. in time. Um, but you'd be surprised that hits a lot of our kids. Mm -hmm. okay. It really yep. does. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the target is that preventative with the underserved kids. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions or... No, thank you very much. I have a question. Oh, good. Are you able, have you found any children that uh, could be qualified for some of these programs and haven't been and that you're able to connect them like with MA or some of those programs? Mm -hmm. That's good too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Item five, approval of today's agenda. Is there a motion to approve today's agenda? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item six, consent items. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion of those items? If not, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item seven, reports. Dr. Funk. Okay, not a lot for you tonight. Uh... You saw an email, I think, this weekend on school buildings. A little background on that. Um, the average set point in the Big Nine, because our, our um, maintenance people talk, facilities people, is 68 degrees. Okay? Um, I think ours was below 71, but we moved it to 71 last week. I think it was probably in the 69, 70 range, so we've adjusted it up to 71. Um, the high school continued to have geothermal pump issues. I think we had three new parts that were ordered. They're supposed to be here tomorrow, if I'm correct, which should help some things as far as balancing out air temperature. But the other interesting thing to point out is with, with the new HVAC systems we have in all of our buildings that we put in, as you can feel, put your hand up, the air is kind of moving. And because of that, it's, it's healthier for us. But it's also a little cooler because the air is moving. Even though the thermostat might say 71, it might feel a little bit cooler. So I, again, I think we encourage kids, teachers, administrators, you know, dress warmly uh, for this time of year, especially when it's so cold outside. And we got this two student school board members here right now. So, <laughs> so tell me, is it? Because I hear some. I got kids in the high school. Some build, some parts of the building are fine. Some are really cold. What, what are your? Uh... Um, 
Well, I, for one, I noticed mainly in the lunchroom, which I, I mean, it's full of windows, so that's mm -hmm. mainly what it is, but I think it was after break when there was a problem and it was like ridiculously cold. Mm -hmm. And then um, I see Mr. G in the hallway and he's like, all the kids are wearing coats and he's like, what's going on, Quinn? What's going on? I'm like, it's really cold. I don't know if you noticed, but it's really cold in some classes. And so he said he got it all figured out and there was a part. And I think for the past couple of days, it's been, it's been better. warmer, but it was mainly in the lunchroom. And then right after break, I think I noticed it was yeah. felt middle 60s in some rooms. It was we, we had some parts fail. We didn't have any we didn't have any replacements on staff. Yeah, no, it's a lot. I've noticed. Part of the issue was. Um, so, but in the other building, same, similar. Because the, the air is flowing and it feels cooler. So, unfortunately, we can crank it up and you heard the moisture gas having was here last month. And so, it's very here and December was cool. So, that's what we're at with it right now. Justine, did you have any? Oh, it just varies so much from room to room. I have one room, my fifth hour, where you're almost sweating, and then the next room is freezing. So, have you had frostbite? No, nothing yeah. like that. You'll be fine then. Are <laughs> students able to wear their coats then? Uh, they're not supposed to. Most teachers <coughs> them when it was really cold, but mm -hmm. now I, I think mainly it's getting. But I mean, it, again, it varies from room to room. I've noticed it. It's warm. Uh, first semester is Thursday. Um, one of our board members actually uh, suggested this. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, we're going to survey the high school students in grades 9 through 11 um, on their thoughts on having finals after the break. Do you think there was an impact, not impact? Um, you know, just to, just to get feedback on that. And um, we'll have a baseline to share with you after getting that information. So, Kathy came up with a survey today, and uh, it'll be distributed Thursday morning. Um, the iPad refresh has occurred, and they'll be distributed in grades K through two by the end of the month. Um, they're just configuring them now. We've got copy machines. I think two of the three phases are complete. Um, and then the wireless upgrade is almost complete at the high school, and Salesforce will take place sometime around spring break. I just ask one question about yep. the finals. Yep. Um, what's the thought behind not including the seniors in that? They're not going to be year? here next year. But so, are, wouldn't, aren't we asking though this year their experience? Yeah, we're, we're going to do. Then we'll ask the kids again next year. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yep. And we're not asking the eighth graders. We're going to all kind of finals. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Did we um, when we had three parks go on in uh, geothermal? Did they order six? We, got, come on, we do have some experience sizes, that's what Steve was explaining. So we had some inventory, just not the right size. So, yeah. <laughs> I was asking him the same thing. Make sure we have inventory. Justine, you had a question? Yeah, are we getting surveyed because it's changing next year? This week? Okay. What, what about, and then I had a question along that same line about um, youth and government which uh, my kids went through it. I think there was 150 kids or something. I know it's low now. It, it, okay, now is that, is that because, I mean, is finals part of that or not? Or um, what would? I've been in, I did not do youth and government this year, but I did it since eighth grade through 11th. And it started out when I was in eighth grade, like probably 45 kids. And my junior year, there was like 30. And now you said there's like 20. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with sports because um, I play basketball, so we'd have a coach having to come get us, bring us back and forth um, for games on Friday nights. And then finals, and it's also, is it four, 400 this year still, or did they bump it up? Four. Do you remember? Is it four? So I know for a lot four of kids, yeah. yeah, for a lot of kids that can be, you know, they're like three days, why would we pay $400? But um, I know they're working on trying to get the younger grades to do it. I mean, it, the hard thing about it, when I was in youth and government, we struggled trying to show kids who aren't in it what it's about, because it sounds like government, ew, why would I want to do that? But we're trying um, to have kids take pictures, send them in, so that way we can kind of show it's more than just sitting in and listening to government, you're involved. They shut down the Capitol, it's all full of kids. There's a kid governor, I mean, I think it's really fun, but we're working on that. I've been talking to some of the kids with advertising, so.
Okay, thanks. Are there any scholarships or any Tiger Fund, yeah. And do all classes have finals now? Yeah. yeah, I think Just they about. do. I think that was uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, that I, was the, the switch. I believe every. Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that used to be they could good attendance and everything. I believe it's required that every class either has to have a project, a test, or a final on the last day before break. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? So I have a, um, I'll just do my report first. I have a question about a comment I heard about, and, and I, it's after this letter I got here, um, the red t-shirts in the classrooms, and, and what is that, and what, what uh, do we have a response, and I, I think I know what it is, but I just guess I want confirmation. Since, uh, how many sessions have you guys done? Eight. Okay. I think for all eight sessions, sure. we've had eight negotiating sessions with the ALEA so far, and prior to every single negotiation session, there's been an email that has gone out to the members of the ALEA telling them to wear red t-shirts or wear red in support of teacher negotiations on the day that the negotiations are taking place. And so, They've actually had Education Minnesota buy them t-shirts um, so that they can wear. So um, today they had, they had their new t-shirts and I don't know, I, I wasn't allowed out in a lot of the buildings today, but uh, um, today was a red day or the eighth red day of the year. Um, so that's, that's what I know at this point in time. And, and as I tried to mention to Janice, I mean, I. We really need to separate negotiations from education, from teaching. And when either group is asked to do something with the students in the middle, that is unprofessional. Um, and so I think the board should have a response to that. And we can't ask, we, we can't tell them not, they can wear what they'd like. I understand the labor laws. But I would like to express my severe disappointment in that level of unprofessionalism that students would be subjected to difficulties that are occurring in negotiations, which should be private and done in a professional manner. I mean, that's my opinion. So I, I guess I would like to hear uh, what other people think. I don't have a microphone, but I was actually working in one of the buildings. It's okay. I was actually working in one of the buildings one of the days that they were wearing red. And so, you know, as they come and go, Oh, I see you're wearing a red t-shirt. How come you're not wearing a red t-shirt? So they actually make a deal about it as well. In front of kids, maybe not in front of kids, but so I've had some first-hand experience with it as well. But does anyone else, I mean, it just bothers me. And, I, and again, I have a lot of experience with negotiations and with unions and I respect the unions. And um, there's a process that's in place for management and unions to negotiate in good faith and it shouldn't involve children. I guess that's where the line is drawn for me. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. And also I feel, um, and I hope teachers know we respect them as professionals, but professional attire is also part of that expectation. And I haven't firsthand seen it, but to me a t-shirt is probably not very professionally dressed either. And, I don't know that we have a dress code um, policy, but I know that as professionals, we have expectations about dress. And I would question as well whether a t-shirt is professional attire for an educator too. Okay, others, Jill? What comes to mind for me is that we have a standard for our students that they can't wear anything that is distracting or disruptive to others experience in the classroom. I believe that's right. So, you know, to me, this seems like if it is at that level where it is um, causing a distraction or even if it takes a minute, I'm a minute um, focus from our students to wonder why are these, you know, why is my teacher, um, why are they all dressed the same, I guess. It would be confusing and 
and you know they'd want to maybe know. And I remember when my kids were in elementary, I think it, they would wear red on Friday um, for memorial for Corey Goodnature, the mm -hmm. Night Stalkers. And so, um, to me, you know, if something like that needs to be done, then it should be a corporate thing everyone's aware of, students are aware of, and it's some positive meaning. I don't know that this is, and if it is at the point of distraction, I think it's a problem. Okay. Dave, do you have any comments on this? I agree with uh, Jill's situation. I mean, I think that that's how I would look at it, too, is for, as far as continuity and things like that, and I, and I agree with the distraction. That's the terminology we've used, and if it becomes that, and maybe it has, I don't know for sure, because I haven't been in the meetings. That I think it should be addressed some way. I don't know how far you can go with it. Bill, any comments? Or? <coughs> Well, I, I agree with you on the fact that, you know, it's, it's bringing negotiations into the classroom. Negotiations belong at the negotiations table, and, you know, we don't resort to those types of things. Those tools are available to us, and we choose not to use them, you know, because it's not professional. So, I would, I agree 100%. Student members, any comments? Okay. Have you noticed? Yeah. I, I haven't, but you haven't noticed. I don't know. I don't, I mean, they didn't say, I haven't heard anything like communication, but I find it awkward to see someone who was my teacher kind of sending a negative message to my school board, fellow school board members, leaders who I look up to too. So I think there's good ways to do it, and I feel like it's an awkward way to wear red and kind of butt heads in the school. I agree. I think it should be handled maybe with an email privately to you guys. Or in a private meeting. Okay, good discussion. Thanks. Other reports, Linda. Um, uh, just we all went to the leadership conference. Had some great meetings. Um, today, I was able to sit on a PSEO concurrent advisory committee for Riverland College, which was quite interesting. Seven thirty this morning, I was asked um, to to sit on that. Um, kind of just went over higher learning um, requirements, credentialing, educators, and things like that. So it's just one of those committees that meets twice a year, but <coughs> great information, very interesting. So Thanks for doing that. Yep. Yep. Oh, so we'll just again, like Linda said, enjoyed the leadership conference, lots of good sessions. One I mm -hmm. went to that I found very fascinating was... Um, the continuing development of transgender as a protected status. And so that, I thought, was a very interesting session um, and very relevant for the times that we're in. So yeah, I thought that was good. Okay. Jill? Um, just from the leadership conference, I was a little disappointed in the offerings of the sessions this year, I'll have to say, but I enjoyed both of the speakers. Uh, one interesting um, thing I've, I went by was one of the show and tells. Uh, it's Warren Alvarado Oslo High School, and they have a responsibility honor roll. So they, they don't just have the academic honor roll, but they have like a character asset, you know, honor roll. Mm -hmm. And they, um, they said they reduced their detentions by 32% in the two years that they've had it. Uh, they give away prizes, so they, it's, a, it's a way of positively rewarding. Um, I think good values and, and character, and they said it's really made a big difference in their school. And they all have a, they get a little sticker, and they said the most, they, well, the biggest prize is a Chromebook, but they said the most coveted uh, item is that little sticker because they said you'll look down the roll, the hallway lockers, and they'll all have the stickers. And if you don't have a sticker, it's a, it's a big negative for you. And so that was really. Um, an interesting concept, and, and I'd like to see more done with, with character building in our schools, and hopefully we'll talk more about that with goals. Yeah, great. Dave? Yeah, I remember when we used to put little gold stars in my stuff. I like that. <laughs> you remember the one you got? <laughs> <laughs> And so I didn't mean to skip you too. Do you have any other reports, notation items? I just have some things about like sports. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, our boys swimming won their first game in 10 years, so that was good. 
And then wrestling, I believe, is still undefeated. And music's getting ready for solo ensemble this weekend. And One Act Play has our first competition next Thursday. So that's about Very it. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, item eight, public discussion on district goals. Is there anybody here that wanted to, from the public that wanted to talk about the goals? I didn't mean to leave anybody out. If not, we'll. we'll. So Ashley, can you put up my slides? I'm going to stand up here. So I want to try to forget about the things that happened already because I tried hard to make this a positive experience. So we have to kind of start over, uh, okay? And so the wordsmith, now, I want to show you this. This is my, this is my horse. This is my horse. This horse, my horse's name is Wordsmith. And this horse is dead, okay? And I'm going to set him right there. And I have to take him home or I won't be able to fall asleep tonight. But yeah. as we go through mission, vision, values, and goals, there's going to be like a supernatural power that's come over us. We're all going to want to sit around and wordsmith all of these statements that we're going to be seeing here. And we have to resist that. So do not make me beat this dead horse, okay? <laughs> so if I get closer to that horse, that means we're just wordsmiths. We don't want a wordsmith. We want to get the ideas. This is just the beginning of a process. This was never intended to be the end process. Uh, I, I put some ideas together, but they're just a framework, so we have something to start with the discussion. And so let's put up the, the next slide there. So, you know, vision, mission, vision statement, mission statement, value statement, goals, and tactics. I think everybody hears that, but not everybody knows what they mean. And they have different meanings in different organizations. A vision statement and a mission statement sometimes are confused, as are values, goals, aims, and tactics. So I just want to make sure we're all talking about the same thing. So let's go to the next one. So this district currently doesn't have a vision statement, and that's okay. A lot of organizations don't have a vision statement. So what is a vision statement? And sometimes it's easier to think outside of your own industry. So if we were a group of people that took care of patients or people that had AIDS, our vision, our vision statement might be a world without AIDS. And now that's a pretty broad statement. Another way to think of vision statements, they should be able to fit on a t-shirt. But a world without AIDS, now if I ask you, Julie, how are you going to work on that tomorrow? It's hard to come up with something because it's such a broad definition. It's really, a, it's really a wish. It's a dream, and that's different than your mission statement. Next one. So this is our current mission statement. The mission statement is the what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. It's much more practical. These are things that you can go daily to work and work on. And so this is that's our current mission statement to equip learners of all ages to think, achieve, and to care. And let's go to the next one. And then value statements. A lot of organizations have value statements. What is it that we believe are our pillars, ideas and values that drive what I do? That's our culture. That's things that really don't change over the long term. And right now, we don't have a value statement. Next one. And then you have goals that you set into those values uh, to try to achieve those, to achieve those values. So these are our current goals. And we showed those before. We won't read them all. That's what we had discussed, I think, now three years ago. And then the next slide. So I want to, sometimes it's easier to start with a primary value. So I would like to suggest that we adopt this statement, that the needs of the student come first. It's very similar to another place that I've heard, where the needs of the patient come first. But let me, let me tell you about that. If you believe that, and there's any dissension, a decision that needs to be made, there's limited resources, you simply ask yourself, and tell yourself that the needs of the student come first and that drives your decision every time. And so if you have a conflict with management and a bargaining unit and the board is asked to decide about something, the thought ought to be about the students. If the athletic director needs to know who gets access to the gym from multiple requests, it's about the students. Everything that we do should be about the students and everything else is secondary. So that, that's a primary value. That drives everything. Question. So here it's singular, but when you're saying that it's plural, so I'm just wondering, is it corporate? Because if we come down to the need of one student, 
Is that what we put first over the corporate needs of the other ones, or are you saying whatever is best for students generally? Uh, that's a great question, because ours is actually the needs of the patient mm -hmm. individually. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, sometimes a, a teacher visiting with a student, then it is that student. What's mm -hmm. the best decision for that student, mm -hmm. whereas the board has to make decisions for many students at once, usually. Mm -hmm. So it can change. But it's all about students. Right. It's not about us. It's not about teachers. It's not about staff. Mm -hmm. It's not about public. It's about the students. That's what we do. So that's what I suggest, and, and I, don't, I don't vote, I just want to kind of frame this, so let's go to the next one. So then the values, so you know we have our aims, and you'll see a couple in there. So when I thought about this, these are the things that I think we value as we discuss things. We value academic and extracurricular excellence. That's one thing that we all, you know, that we all work towards. And we value safe and healthy schools, effective and efficient operations, and then, a, and then a couple of new ones, and, and I, I think um, Mike talked about that earlier. As, as we move forward and we want to stay relevant for our community, we have to be agile and innovative. We need to value those two type of things. We need to be innovative, and we have to have business agility. We have to be able to change quickly. And then I also think we, need, you know, we all value community partnerships. We can't do it by ourselves. So, so next one. So a suggested vision statement. Now again, this is a wish, a dream, and I got some of this from the conference and from last year's conference, but wouldn't it be great if every child that came to public school had an individualized educational opportunity that achieved you know, maximum achievement? Individualized educational opportunities and maximum achievement for all students. That would be a suggested vision. And then a mission statement would be in an environment where the needs of the student come first. We are committed to providing all students with educational opportunities that foster individual academic growth and social skills. I think that gets back to what you're saying. There's, we have a lot of students that aren't going to be academic stars, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean they're not good or worthy. They, they, they're going to be good at something else. And, and we need to recognize that and, and foster that as well. The uh, next one. And then I love our Pathways to Success document that uh, was put together a little bit ago. It goes over some of those same things in more of a granular type of a, of a, of a one page. Um, so those are my initial thoughts. I, I think we can, I want to revisit those, but I don't want to wordsmith them. Or I'm going to beat this horse. <laughs> don't make me do it. So any questions about those? Any comments? Mike? Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I appreciate the effort and uh, I think it's a, a great framework. Um, I would suggest that you know, take a copy of this and we sit down with the principals and, okay, what are your thoughts on it? Perhaps get teacher thoughts on it from some staff meetings and, you know, get feedback brought back up and, uh, and then you, of course, the board members can take your wordsmithing opportunities at it away from the table here and, uh, um, you know, see what you think. But I think, I think it's, a, it's a very solid framework to uh, come from. And, you know, and Mark and I talked briefly before the meeting. In my educational life and in my military life, um, I'm sure many of you have had these similar experiences putting together mission statements, vision statements, um, it can be one of the most painful um, you know, experiences. Well, I like this word, well, how about this? And, no, I like this idea. So, I mean, I, I think this is a, a really solid framework to, to begin with. And, you know, and I think you can make the discussion of the, the values piece, absolutely. I mean, you as a board represent the community, but these are values. And then I think more along the lines of the, uh, you know, the mission piece could be something, you know, I, I think the administration would, would be pretty interested in as far as what that, what that ends up with. I think the great stuff. And I like, uh, you know, the value, the values, the, the primary value and the other values are the more concrete 
this is what we could do, this is what we could ask administration to help with. Yeah, the mission and the vision, again, there could be groups years from now still debating if it should be a shall or a should or a would or a could. Uh, so I really like to start with the values and, and see if we could at least maybe agree those or add some or take some of those away and then share it with other groups to see if they have additions or subtractions or what they think of that. Bill, comments? Oh, I, I like the framework that you're putting together. Uh, for me to, to be able to establish goals, many organizations I think fail because they don't understand their, their culture and their values and their assets and their, their passions. And if you don't understand those things, you know, you can put goals together, but you don't necessarily have any meat behind them. Um, I think we've been successful to a certain degree because we have uh, you know, excellent administrative staff that has been able to, to put together some goals that make sense for our kids and for where we want to go. But, you know, I like framing it, you know, with those four concepts in mind. Um, the other thing is that the last speaker of the conference, I really enjoyed him. Um, you know, he framed the discussion a little bit differently. And so bringing this out um, to the administrative team, bringing it out into the buildings, having some discussions, I think is a good idea. Um, actually, even possibly for us to, you know, maybe set some goals this year, but also maybe one of those goals also is to take a look at the book that he suggested, you know, um, what was it called? Counting What Counts, mm -hmm. you know, and reading that as a board and then discussing, you know, what that means and how does it apply here. So just some suggestions, but I like your ideas. I think they're spot on. Can we pop them back up there? The values? Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, those, yep. yep. I agree with what Bill said. I don't know what else to say. I mean, he pretty much said it. <coughs> I mean, do those resonate with people? Is there one that doesn't? Is there? I think you have to be careful that you don't have 15 of them. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Four or five. Yep. You know, and, and I think any time we can be more consistent with what the things, not only what we think and how we talk, but see how that all comes together and what we do, I think that direction is good. And that's what I like what you started with. Yeah. And again, any goal we come up with should fit, to some degree, under one of those headings. If not, we probably shouldn't have it as a goal. So these values are for the school system itself, rather than the actual learners or students that are going through the system? Right. It's for the, yeah, it's for everyone in the system, and you would expect, uh, you'd expect the students to participate in ones that they can understand and that they have input into, some of which they don't. But yes, I mean, it's the culture. It's what it's how everyone behaves. It's what everyone does. And by you model behavior by those. And so students learn by watching that behavior. So the character piece would come under which one? Probably safe and healthy, yeah, or partnerships, yeah. Especially after the conference, the, the two, I thought the mission statement seemed like it was, it just didn't have any movement in it, it was just kind of stagnant. And then looking at the goals, um, there were two two aspects that I would like to see, and I, I, love, I like that you had the opportunity word in there, mm -hmm. <laughs> the individual word, because that um, last speaker of the conference, too, um, really kind of confirmed a lot of ways I was thinking about kids and how they're not, I mean, some of the, the most genius people I know have not excelled in the school system and have not graduated college, you know, so how do we um, help them and harness their uh, ingenuity and their uh, the motivation that they have and not put that cap on them, um, you know, and different thoughts have come to me. I know that the administration will have lots of ways to work that through, but even thinking of, like, um, fluid grades where you don't have to just be limited to the courses offering in your, in your grade, but there would be like one calculus class or one whatever class it was and anyone that was qualified or interested could, you know, rise to that one rather than be just capped and capped and bored, which I think happens to a lot of our students. And I love our gifted and talented program, but, but each one, each student has gifts and talents and try to 
mine those out a little earlier or make some kind of opportunity for them, or like a hybrid class, you know, like a music techno technological mm -hmm. class, you know, something that will spark their interest and keep them engaged and motivated. I love that piece. And then the other piece, too, like I was saying before, was that um, the character piece, the community service focus piece. Um, I was talking with an educator the other day, and she said that um, there was a study done on preschoolers to find out it must have been longitudinal, I don't know the name of the study, but what um, what showed more success was more of a success indicator for their for their life and their education. And it wasn't poverty or anything like that. It was um, being able to delay gratification. So just those kind of character building things were um, primary to kids. And um, sometimes we're not getting those at home or we're too busy on the video game, you know, to do those kind of things, and we do need to fill in those pieces, I think, as a, as a school district for our kids' betterment, and then that way they are more geared to give back to the community. And, and to me, it, it gives kids a lot of sense of they're needed. They're needed on this earth because, you know, a lot of times they're having issues with behavior and all kinds of things because they're not feeling needed, not feeling wanted. Okay. Other comments? Steve? I do oh, echo you... yep. lots of what's been said already. I think that last speaker really spoke to me, and I'm hearing the same thing from you, that the way we've always done things maybe isn't the best way as we look to the future. And, and I agree that um, the more we can foster and encourage individual talents and strengths and gifts in kids, um, I think that's really hard to do, but as a school system, but I think if we look at that as a value, I think that that just speaks volumes. And I also think tied to some of the character pieces that Jill talks about, um, how do we, make kids who haven't been experiencing a lot of success in a traditional school environment, do they have people who believe in them, that they're good at something, and that they are smart and excel in, in an area that it maybe isn't a traditional mm -hmm. area? I think, you know, I think of the arts right away. Mm -hmm. So often kids feel like that isn't valued in a way that's meaningful for them. So how can we create a, our, a system that values and, and reinforces for kids we believe in them in whatever they excel at? Mm -hmm. Are we tapping into that? So should we have a, one more up there that kind of captures that need for individual success not well, measured not yeah, measured by I'll, typical I'll come back to what you have your primary value mm -hmm. and if your primary value is not listed with your value so I think you have your primary value with that I think you know the needs to you know. mm -hmm. well, I think the innovation mm -hmm. I think individualization comes with innovation a bit in there too yeah. you know, we talk about that um, and agility, like you said, the ability to make change. And I think that does kind of speak to it a bit. And even the community partnership, I might need to beat your word Smith horse, but maybe community something else <laughs> that would be <laughs> that would be more of a you know partnership plus I don't know, something giving back, whatever that piece is. Community partnership plus service or service. something. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It could fit in there too. So if we can agree, uh, you know, on those with some wordsmithing and the primary, then I think that's a good spot to take it to get other input. And uh, so I guess I'd be looking for some consensus. It's kind of not an action item, but just a consensus that that's a good starting point. And, and I'm, just, I'm just taking them one by one. The first one, academic and extracurricular excellence. Is that enough for what we're saying? I mean, we're talking about even more than just academic excellence. 
an extracurricular excellence, and here it's words again, but is it more than just academic and extracurricular? Is it the arts? Is it the, or is that what you're saying by extracurricular? Yeah, I guess that's, what I, that's what I thought by, yeah. You know, there aren't a lot of opportunities for, um, you know, there is for music, but other kind of art, I, don't, I wouldn't say it would be extracurricular. It's outside the academic. I mean, in a sense, music falls within our academic day. Um, so I mean, that's why I'm just saying that it seems like extra is over and above. But I mean, I think put it together. You might want to be careful with regards to creating. Uh, you know, when you have the the financial piece that you're going to go up against as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're throwing that into value, then you know, you're also saying that you're going to create the, you know, the monetary piece to it as well. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to put our money where our mouth is, you know, whatever we decide on. But I guess that academic, to me, the academic piece means means those things that are tested on an ACT test. They're not, uh, to me, it doesn't include all the rest, but perhaps it is along the same understanding. And then, you know, the next two we've had is AIMS, which I think we understand what they have meant. And, and, and also, as we've done in the past, those could be, that's how a board agenda could be, you know, topics could fit under those as we currently do. And post it in each room. Yeah, and that's, that's, a, that's a good point, because, you know, the... Uh, Again, when you show up to work and you say, what am I going to do today that's better than I did yesterday to help somebody that I didn't do yesterday, everybody can learn and memorize the needs of the student come first. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm just going to, I know we're not on camera, but I don't know the Mayo vision statement because it's about this long. I couldn't tell you what it was. I have to go look it up. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> And, and that's an issue because, uh, but I do know the needs of the patient come first. And so I show up and I know that's what, that's what our primary thing is that we do there. And so everybody that is involved with this district can understand the needs of the student come first. And then the other piece is then how do you communicate the fourth one, innovation and agility, when you have it on the cement? Well, you know, it just put, it puts a permanence to it which is good, but you also put the stagnation with it as well. So it, you always want to be really careful on how you are um, visually communicating these pieces because it could be like, you know, you create a problem. Yeah, and to me, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. But that, that also means then if someone says, okay, they, they, we value innovation, then they should feel empowered and safe to come up with a, to bring forward an idea that they previously would have not felt safe to do because it's innovative. And you said you were innovative creative. and creative. So I think that's what we should do now to get it to certain groups uh, in certain in a package. I guess I'd have to work on that. I mean, I'll have Ashley send the slides to all of us, but to send it to the teachers or to the principals, I think it needs to be a little bit more packaged into a something that you can read and. Is that something you could work on? I have a question, Mark. The, you know, you, Jill, you were talking about that community part of it. Mm -hmm. Instead of community partnership, could it be community involvement? Because then it would be the student being involved in the community plus the community being involved with the student. Smack the horse. Or instead of a change the partnership on that community one. Pardon? I like the involvement. Yeah, involvement because it goes both ways. It can go both ways. Okay. It's just a, it's just fun. Was that you, Chica, say hit the horse? No, no, <laughs> nobody touches my horse. Someone's going to get me, I know it. <laughs> so we'll, I'll, uh, I'll work over the next couple of days to package it into something we can email out to different groups that with a little explanation and what we're asking them to do. I mean, that's one of the things is we're going to send it out. We, we, it has to come with a request of, you know, right. what, what is it, what am I asking you to do about this? Read it, read it and edit it, you know, make comments. So, and then I'll share that with you. 
Again, I think we have structures in place that we can do this. Um, administrative team, we've got directors, we have principals being in meetings with the teachers. So, I mean, I think we have got systems we can use to have these discussions Good. Um, in place. Good. Other comments about that? And then um, I had asked that everybody kind of look, look at our, can you put the goals that we had from last time? So that's what our goals were. And I'd ask people to look at those and see if they had suggestions. And I, and I still think those are important. I think they'll become easier to define and to decide if we want to keep them or change them once we get the rest of the structure in place and then start to plug different goals in. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want you to hold those thoughts uh, because we'll, we'll use them later. And again, there was never an intent to, this is the final product, and here you guys go in the district. It was supposed to be involving everybody. That was the attempt yesterday. That's why I mentioned it multiple times. Um, student members, any comments? Good. Yeah, I like it. Good. Other comments? Thank you for your vision on that framework. And oh, sure. Yeah. Some ideas together and making consistency and talking points and everything else. Thanks. And I want to thank uh, Ashley for putting the slides together. Even though I gave her like four or five weeks to do it, she just did them today. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think she had like 72 minutes when I <laughs> to get them. So thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Yeah, so I'll email those. I'll just email that. Great. Can you just do that, Ashley? Yeah. Send the out there. Um, all right. Uh, item nine, closed session. Pursuant to Minnesota statute section 13D.05, subdivision 3A, we're going to go into closed session for purpose of board self evaluation. Um, yeah, thank you. I'll need a motion to approve that. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, we're in closed session.